The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Angela Miller Bevan, and Angela is the regional director of the Braille Institute. Welcome, Angela. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, God. So exciting to be here. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you were able to make it. And I know that the Braille Institute does so much important work for so many people. And so I'd love to hear what you're up to these days. Well, the Braille is actually a great organization. Um, I'm very fond of it. My family's been involved with it for years. Really? My mother-in-law helped uh, found and, or build the building that we're in on De La Vina Street. So oh, wow. it's kind of a family affair yeah. and I'm very excited and proud to be there. Um, we have just done so much, especially over the pandemic. We are 100 years old, over 100. Oh, wow. um, we were founded in uh, 100 years ago and by J. Robert Atkinson. Mm. Um, he went blind, he was a blind cowboy. Oh gosh. And he started the Braille Press down in LA and now we have seven centers in California. Um, we go from San Diego all the way up to Santa Barbara. We're the farthest north center. Oh, okay. Um, we serve low vision and blind, which I think sometimes people um, don't really know that because we provide free services to help people um, learn independent living skills and other things um, when they start to lose their vision. Ah. So it's, it's, it's something that is, it, once someone starts to lose their vision, they can start coming to our workshops and our classes. Um, great story about one of our students was that she was actually working as a secretary here in, in Santa Barbara and she started to lose her sight. Mm. And so her boss um, helped her get involved with the Braille Institute and we were able to help her with technology to help her so that she could stay working as the secretary position. In and the same job. Yeah, in the same job, oh, wow. which is shows how great this community is that a yeah. boss would do that. And she went on to continue working until she could retire. And once she retired during the pandemic, she wanted to be able to have connection with her family. Her family didn't live close in town. And so remotely, we were able to help her with technology, with um, accessible technology. And she was able to participate in back east. She had a bar mitzvah that the whole family went to and she couldn't go because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So she got to participate in it. And so oh, it's just wow. really exciting stories like that, that we get to help people learn how to use technology, how to even do simple things like working in the kitchen, um, doing things like that. We also have classes um, that you can take. We have a ceramics class. Mm -hmm. And we have great volunteers that come in and teach self-defense. So they wow. teach. That's, that's really good and practical for I know. somebody that's losing their sight. Yeah, they teach all of our students. And we also do uh, O&M, which I wasn't familiar with until I came to the Braille. It's orientation and mobility, mm -hmm. which helps people with what, their white canes. Oh. Also um, can also help them if they decide to go having a guide dog. Mm -hmm. So they help them and they help them learn how to get around town with bus service and things like that. So we have quite a broad range of what we do. We also have a full service library. So we have um, a library where we have braille books, mm -hmm. but we also have um, where we can do book recordings for people. And we have a mm -hmm. system where they can do up to 20 books at a time and we'll record them for them and then they take it home and they can plug it into their device and listen wow. to books. Yeah. That's a lot of services. <laughs> In a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. So do you, okay, so you say you go up to Santa Barbara 
But what about North, Northern California? So we do go to Northern California. Now that we're out of the pandemic, we can also send, um, my staff can go outside of Santa Barbara. But remarkably over the pandemic, we were able to um, do everything remotely. We had to learn how to do it remotely. And for someone that has low vision and blind, that can be challenging. Yeah. Um, and so for the classes that we do are remote, and we've seen that North County can do remote, South County, but we've had students sign up as far as New Zealand, oh, gosh. like all over the world, because now they're finding out about our services, and all they have to do is log on and be a part of a class or a workshop. So that's a positive thing that has come out of the pandemic. It really, it's fascinating to me because um, I'm, techni I'm technically challenged, I'll admit <laughs> it. Um, everyone knows that about me. So for me, I am fascinated at how during the pandemic our instructors could meet with someone, you know, over the phone, walk them through, talk them through how to set up their iPad, how to set up their computer, how to do all these different things. And we were able to, for something like an independent living skills class mm -hmm. where they're learning something in the kitchen, we could send them in the mail the different tools that they would need or magnifiers. And then we would be able to talk to them through their iPads or on their phones to help walk them through how to use those items. What, what kind of tools? So in the kitchen, there's all different kinds of things. There can be from a knife that oh, won't cut yourself or um, even you know a cup or mm -hmm. things just to help you maneuver in the kitchen oh, better. Okay, okay. Yeah, things like that. Um, magnifiers that would help you to see things better. So it just depends on the level of your, your uh, sight loss and where you're at is where we have to, we have um, OTs, occupational therapists, that meet with you first and talk to you about your needs and then they refer them out to the different areas at the center that we would need. Well, good for you all for being so creative. <laughs> I'm sure that was not easy to get everything remote? We have a very good team at Braille. So because we go from San Diego, we have seven centers from San Diego to Santa Barbara. So we have a large team with a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent oh. within our organization. So some of those people, maybe down in San Diego or somewhere else, could help with all the technology. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Except for I have some really great instructors on my campus. So um, Skyler, who was actually um, born blind, is one of our instructors and he teaches uh, accessible technology um, to students but he has a fascinating story he was blind at birth he's been on a um, ski team oh, he plays the piano he just became a father oh he is married to a lovely um, librarian at Westmont um, he but it, it's amazing to watch what he can accomplish and that he can help teach other students and people that are having issues with their sight or going blind, and he can help train them and help them to succeed in life independently. That's just, I mean, I, I'm sitting here trying to imagine what that would be like. I can't even imagine it. I can't, I... Well, so can you imagine him? skiing down a mountain without <laughs> sight? No, I can't. But it's possible. You know, it's all of these yeah. things are possible, and that's, you know, what's so great about the Braille is it's teaching even younger people all the things that you can accomplish and the things that you can do, yeah. even without sight. So are many of your clients older or do you have a mixed age? Most of our clients are older. Mm -hmm. um, we are currently in the process of bringing back our youth program. We used to have a youth program and then it stopped for a little while, so now we're bringing that back. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been working with the school district um, with uh, students that they have that have lost their sight or losing their sight, so that hopefully we'll be able to bring to the table some of the things that the school district's not able to do. Um, you know, help teach these kids different things um, and have, we have down in Los Angeles a, choir, a youth choir. Mm -hmm. So giving them other opportunities. Yeah. Um, so we're working on that right now. And then we have some um, people that are, you know, my age. Um, we, there, we have a 
Travis, who is um, actually was at the center when I left today, um, working on some technology, but he works for the county of Santa Barbara. Oh. And he went blind, mm. and um, so we help him with some technology things, and Skyler and Travis work together. So, but mostly older people. Uh, would you say that um, there are more youth or younger people with vision issues than we realize or than we would think? I that do. That sounds like a lot. I do think that that is. So what happens in the schools is that they be, they get IEP tested, mm -hmm. and then it shows the different things that they need um, if they have any um, special needs. And um, it's it was it amazed me how many kids in the school district. There are a lot of kids because it's not just being blind. It's also losing your vision. Mm -hmm. So it is something that is happening in our schools. Wow. And so you say you have quite a team. So how many folks do you work with on the Santa Barbara team? So locally, if we're fully staffed, yeah. we have, right now we're looking for a youth instructor. Okay. Um, but when we're fully staffed, we have uh, Paid employees, um, 11. Okay. And then you use volunteers also, right? Yes, we do. We have some great volunteers. They um, do our ceramics class, mm. self-defense, exercise. Um, then we also have admin volunteers, oh. which are great because um, they help us at the front desk. So I have um, an admin staff of two, and they're pretty amazing. but they have quite a few hats to wear, so oh. the admin volunteers come in and they really help us a lot. They, they sit at the front desk and greet people and help um, people find their way to which classroom they're going to mm -hmm. or if they're, and I don't think I said anything about the cooking class. Oh, okay. oh my gosh. The cooking class is amazing because Richard, um, our, one of our instructors, he does a cooking class that is amazing and he starts this, the term out where they start just by learning broth, and then they turn it into a sauce, and then they add a protein and a grain, and it's just amazing to watch. But he is, a, I would call him a five-star chef. Oh, gosh. He is pretty amazing. And he has restaurant back, background, uh -huh. so that's kind of his, his thing. But he also teaches independent living skills. Oh. So he teaches um, how to count money, how to, use the utensils in the kitchen, how to turn the oven and stove off and on, how to be careful not to burn yourself, things like that. Wow. And then, uh, so tell us a little bit about um, guide dogs, how you find them, how you pair them up, how you train so them. So Guide Dogs people. of America is really, you know, they train the dogs, they work with the dogs. We really come in um, at a place where when their people are coming in, if they're interested in that, then we connect them with them. Mm -hmm. And it really is a lifelong partnership. I mean, it's um, it's something where Guide Dogs of America is amazing to have these dogs. But then when you introduce a dog to a person that's losing their sight or that's blind, that becomes their partner. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's fascinating. I heard um, someone that has a guide dog explain it. They were talking about traveling. And they were saying, you know, you want to pack your bag and get all your stuff ready. But you also have to remember your dog. Like, what if you can't get water? What if oh, you gosh. can't get snacks? Yeah, what yeah. If, like, you can't walk up to a place in the airport and go, I need dog snacks. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's fascinating. So that's, that's their partners. So they work hard to pair them up and they build a relationship together. It's like, I think it's just like having a, a child, like yeah. it's their partner. Yeah. And they are amazing. I recently just went to a conference in um, Anaheim and there was, it was um, a technology conference, mm. but there were all these people with guide, like so many guide dogs I've never seen as that many. Oh, wow. They came from all over the United States and things that people don't think about, but dogs have to go to the restroom. So oh, there's right, like right, places right. outside where they go to the restroom. And, but it, it was amazing to see all the different types of dogs and how they paired them up. But, uh -huh. And the dogs, even with all the commotion and all the people, the dogs still stay on course and help them through the crowds. It's wow. pretty amazing. Gosh, and so, um, all right. So Braille Institute is a nonprofit 501c3. 
It is. And people can make financial donations by going to your website, I would imagine. Yes, you can go to our website. You can contact me. Um, we are um, a 501c3 that is um, completely funded by private um, donations. Oh, really? So we are, yeah, very proud of that. And it's it's a great organization. It really it is, like I have it. to say. Right. So a person can go on your website. They can look and... Uh, find out how to volunteer, see all the different volunteer opportunities, mm -hmm. how to sign up, all that. And you also can go on our website, which I think is also really um, amazing, is that we have workshops on our website that anyone oh, can really? sign up for, for free. You don't have to be a student, you don't have to be anything. And it's they're really interesting um, topics. They'll. We have UCLA, doctors from UCLA talking about, you know, glaucoma or just what happens when you're losing your sight or things that there's just a lot of information and they do, um, there's a workshop that they did on traveling. I mean, and there are just a lot of different topics, I think, that can be interesting to people with sight and people without sight. Yeah. You know, I can see that it would be interesting to people with sight so they can better understand a person that they may encounter or someone that they already know that is uh, sight challenged or however you... And you know, so I started out by saying my mother-in-law helped mm -hmm. to raise the funding for the building at the Braille Institute. And she did that because her best friend went blind. Oh. And that's how she got involved. So I think it's important for all of us if we have yeah. sight to be aware of what it's like to be without sight and to have that education. Yeah, I think it'd be really valuable yeah. for people with sight to just spend a little time on that website just listening to some of that because I'm sure there's a lot of things that we wouldn't even think about. Well, there is a lot of things that you don't think about. Even, um, you know, even helping a blind person or even when you walk up to a person that has a a guide dog, those dogs are working. And so yeah. it's very important for people to know that they're not yeah. pets. They're not dogs that you reach out and pet or, and that was something I learned because I didn't realize that, that you shouldn't pet a guide yeah. dog. You should ask permission, but usually they're, they're working. So you don't want to take their attention away from what their job is. So there's a lot of education to it and a lot of like, um, when you come up across someone that's blind, how do you guide them? Like, do you reach out and grab them? <laughs> or right. when you meet someone that's blind, that you, um, when we walk into a room, we announce ourselves, uh -huh. just like we do when we're online in a remote class. When we go to speak, we say, hi, this is Angela, so that everybody knows oh, who's speaking. I see, I see. So things like that, that you, you know, that's, I don't think we're all aware of, but that are helpful. Yeah, I have heard that you don't want to just take somebody's hand right. to help them. There's something about they, they want you to take their elbow. Their right? elbow, yeah. And, you know, as sometimes when the students come in, I've seen my staff, which is um, so sweet. They'll say, okay, I'm sticking my hand out. Would you like to shake? Oh. They'll give them a cue instead of so oh, that, the, that they know good. what's going on. Yeah, you, you, learn to, you learn to use your words more. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and it's, it's been very educational for me. It really has because um, we're all so used to having our sight. You know, we don't, we don't know what it's like. We don't, yeah, we just take and it And they do this, they've, I've heard my staff talk about that they used to put blindfolds on oh, the staff yeah. so that they could feel what it's like. Yeah. And so I tried one of the blindfolds and it's, it is, it's hard and it's challenging, but it changes everything yeah. without your sight. Wow. Okay, so we have about a minute left. Is there another message you'd like for our audience to know? You know, I just think that um, it, for the everyone that hasn't been to the Braille, that you should stop by and see oh, it. Oh, so go for a visit. Because it is a beautiful campus. Um, it's um, on Della Vina. Okay. And it's 2031 Della Vina Street. And it's just such a beautiful campus and such a beautiful place to be. And so whether you want to volunteer or just stop by to see, you know, everybody, I think that that's something that's that... That's a great idea. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, you should. You should yeah. come by and see me. Yes, I will. 
<laughs> oh gosh, Angela, thank you so much for all your good work and for coming on the show to tell us about it. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.